You're joining us today where I'm looking at a progression of ideas through making panoramas from video using Microsoft's Image Composite Editor 2.0. Now, there will be about 30 slides and I'm going to take my time and work through all of them as it's a clear progression of ideas for you to make better photospheres and get up to the optimum degree of 360 uh, circular and also up and down up to I think it's 158 degrees. So what I want to do starting uh, straight away is look at the top left and what I've done to get this far and if you want to look at how I got this far there's a previous video to say open image composite editor I'm using Windows 7 and then I've started to create a new panorama from video and it's the second option over here you can see my, my little uh, red uh, pointing circle thing and so I've started so what I've done is I've imported a horizontal video and I've told it to auto create itself so number one would be import number two would be stitching and this is where I'm getting now now the beauty here um, is that we've got uh, some ponies in the field and it's 360 horizontal if you go in and I can do this quite well by saying that the camera motion, and I've literally stood there, no tripod, no nothing, with my Moto G phone, and just clicked record, held it still, and rotated my legs and my body in a 360. So that's why it says there is a 360 horizontally and 58 degrees vertically. And from the video, which lasted, I don't know, 15 seconds or something, it went down and it said I can find 47 suitable images and what we'll notice here is that quite easily you can see that I've kind of like stayed still but I've sort of wavered around a bit you know okay so what but the point is that we can really start to throw some some serious imaging at the editor and it will come out with great results what you also notice here and I will highlight this it will come along and there are two horses in the field what you can actually see is a brown horse and this um I don't know, I'm rubbish on horse colors there's two two horses heads one there and one there but it's moved slightly as I've rotating and then the editor has come along and said oh okay I think there's another horse or it's moved but that is for another feature of the composite editor now um let's let's follow it through so first of all we start off and I'm going to go a bit quicker now and so we come along and this is screen number two, which is cropping of this image. And you can see it's cropped, but there's some grey areas. If you're familiar with this already, fantastic, lovely. Then we can go along and click the next image. And I've used, go back, auto complete here up at the top right. And I've said I want to fill in all the grey areas. So if you look here centrally and bottom left, bottom right, it kind of like curls up a bit. And so if I go back again, look, and I've now filled in those areas. And you can see that some of it, Actually, it's pretty good for this one. Moving on to the next one, and this is just an idea to say, when I started the video straight away, the horse was actually facing to the right. And as I've rotated, and I, I might release the video of this, because this brown horse here gets a bit fed up, because the, the one here, the, the two-coloured horse, call it a cre the cream horse, starts neighing and making a load of noises, and the one on the left here starts to kick its leg out right at the end of the video. In other words... There are now three horses in it. That's all I want to say there is that you could have some very surprising results with motion. Now going on to this one, and we can see down at the bottom that we've got 38 images here, 360 and 58 degrees. That The horses, by the way, were getting a bit um, troublesome, and so I, I went somewhere else rather than to get kicked or something. So um, what we've got here is, once again, a flat 360. This is 58 degrees. That means it measures from top to bottom. And there's the image. If I move on and I say that we look at the image which is auto-completed, it looks like that. And then we go on to another one. Now this one's really interesting because what I did intentionally here to test out, uh, or to test um, ice really, is to say I started off and I moved my camera in a 360 degree in a, an intentional up and down roller coaster movement. And I did that to see if it could even stitch it together. And what you can actually see here, look, is that here's one image, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And when it goes through for the 360, there are 38 images. So in predictable fashion, I went on and I said, that is our photosphere. Oh my goodness, look at the state of that. Not a problem. We can click auto complete. When we've done that, it does that. 
Now, of course it's not ideal because I was pushing and testing the software. So we've got these gray areas here and a bit of an arc there. Is it, well put it this way, I've seen worse photospheres on Google Maps and published on Google Maps as opposed to just photospheres at Google Plus albums. So following on to the next intentional idea, this time what I've done is I've kind of like peeled an orange or some fruit. So in other words, I've started at the top here. I've gone along and intentionally gone down to the second layer and the third layer. So what we find here is that we have got here we are. Um, just make that. Oh, where's it going? What we've got is 62 images, 360 degrees, and that's 80.4. So, what we can do next, I just want to get my um, images back, is to say to ourselves, what can we do for the next step? And what you're going to find is it completes like this. I can use autocomplete. I would say I'm pretty confident that sky is not an issue. And there it is. And in fact, it actually looks OK. You'd never notice. OK, going on to the next idea, we have got something like this. And what I've done this time is I've kind of like started at the top, gone down, up, down, up, down, up, and then done the 360. Pretty mottled, but it's another test. This time you can see, though, that I've gone to 134 degrees vertically. So remember, we started at 58, and now I'm pushing it to be even more. So moving on, you get the you know the idea now. Mm, yeah, it's all right. This one, very, very interesting, because what I've done is I've done the proper... You know, I've done a few tests. I've started at the top, 360, lower and lower. I think I've done three rotations. And what it's done, and I'll just bring this up, is that we are talking about 102 images that it's extracted from the HD uh, footage. And it's 360 and it's 157 degrees vertically. So that is probably one of the best results so far. So looking at how that looks as a autocomplete, which is hardly anything, look at the top to fill in. So once we've filled that in, it looks like that. And it's that's available live on Google Maps. I'll give you the link. So after that, we go on to the churchyard. And this is, gets really interesting because I picked this because these are some quite well-defined geometrical uh, shapes, you know, the gravestones and the, the old church here. So in other words, that is not bad. OK, so it's 115 degrees, 360, 94 images. We go on in the predictable fashion. We say let's auto-complete it and boom, off we go. By the way, when I export, I'm going to JPG files at about 90%. I'm only getting three megabytes per image ready for Google Maps, which is like amazing because I'm struggling with my DSLR camera to get anything from well less than 10 megabytes. It can be like 30, 40 megs. It's massive files. OK. This one was a pretty much identical fashion. However, the software just lost control. What happened was that I did a complete automatic import. And as I did the, the software build, it, it just got stuck a little bit and couldn't find it. So I'll come back to this image in a moment because I did find a very, very easy and sensible solution. This is 146 uh, degrees, by the way. So we can see it doesn't work every time on auto. And you can see this is a spherical photosphere. So that's what it looked like. I tried to fill it in and let's be fair, that's that's not anything more than surrealism. So this is another one with the roller coaster fashion. And then we go on to say, can I fill that in? Yes, I can, but it looks terrible. And that's why I'm doing the test. This one is not bad. This is two rotations flat. So that's 720 degrees, 102 degrees. That is a goer if I wanted to do something with it now. On Oh, sorry, when I go, go back to this, in actual fact, you know that one that I said, let me just, just whiz back a couple of bits, you know the one that went horrendously wrong, which was that one? And I didn't say it went wrong, it just went whatever it went. What I actually did here, and let's just bring it down to this image here, um, no, this image, is when you play the video on the import mode, and perhaps I'll do a separate video for this one, you can tell the software which images to include on the rotation. I will make a follow-up video for this to show you. So in other words, when it starts through the sky, I've stopped the video, say where the tree is, and I 
drawn a rectangle and I said, I want that image. I want that image. I want that piece of tree. I actually want the gravestone. And it gives a couple of like um, pegs, if you like. Rock climbers will know this, that sometimes indoor climbing, not sometimes all the time, you've got um, some handholds. If you can literally give a handhold or a peg for the software, then it kind of it helps it, you know, find its way. So on a massive long car journey, rather than doing the car journey, you would say, you know, make your way to, I don't know, the the church. If you can see the church spire, then you are in the right place. And then you have a couple of reference points that gets you to the end of the journey. And that is the end of the journey, actually, of this video. So thank you very much for watching. I will whip it up to YouTube.